Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Boris Johnson's latest U-turn. Uh, it's a big one. Again. Could be a big weekend for him. He's done what only three days earlier he described as cancelling Christmas and being inhuman. That is, he scaled back his brainless Christmas COVID rules that would have made the number of cases skyrocket in the UK, as well as creating a new lockdown called Tier 4 to dump a third of the population of England into. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, just three days before last night's announcement, Keir Starmer urged the Prime Minister to reconsider the relaxation of Christmas Covid rules. This was against a background of rapidly rising cases, worries about a new strain of Covid that spreads much more easily, and every medical and scientific expert who has anything to do with the matter calling very loudly and very publicly for the restrictions to remain in place. In response, Boris Johnson made some moronic jokes, accused Starmer of wanting to cancel Christmas and said, and I quote, we don't want to criminalise people's long made plans. He described such an act as inhuman. Then yesterday, he announced that he would be criminalising people's long made plans. Now, the announcement is good. I'll be honest, I thought it was too late for a U-turn on this one now. I thought if he hadn't changed his tune before last Wednesday's PMQs, he would just think the political embarrassment wouldn't be worth it. Because if he'd have made this decision last Tuesday, it wouldn't have been nearly as bad for him. Now, deeply humiliating for him. But he'd met with his scientific advisors. I'm going to guess that they told him that hospitals were about to melt down. This is the only thing that, that ever gets him to listen to them. The only thing is when they say, right, hospitals are going to have to turn people away now. Oh, crap. That's, the, that's it. It doesn't matter when they say, if you don't do this now, we're going to get to this point in a few weeks. He says, well, just wait, wait, wait a few more weeks then. Now, in justifying this late change of mind, Boris Johnson said that the science had changed. It has not. There is nothing we know today that we did not know several days earlier. He blamed the new variant of COVID that transmit more easily. Again, not new information. Granted, we may have more data now. So when they were first talking about this, we didn't know to what extent this would be responsible for the new rising cases. But in actual fact, what's caused this new... I mean, the new variant may well have... In, in, potentially likely to have increased the new rates, the new rise in infections, but it's not what's caused it because the gradient of that rise has not increased suddenly in the last few days. It's held its course for, for some time now, basically since when the, lo the second lockdown ended. You know, a few days grace, then it started to rise and it's been rising at pretty much that steep rate since. Johnson also said that he's always tried to take the scientific advice and always sought to follow it. I mean, we've known this was a lie for months, but remember that it is Boris Johnson who completely ignored his scientific advisors who called for the second lockdown to begin 21st of September from memory. He ignored that for over a month. Now, if he'd acted when they advised it, we could have had it for just two weeks and it would have brought the rate right back down to the point where the scientists said we our test and trace could have taken over again. As it was, we ended up with a lockdown for double that period for four weeks. But even four weeks, in line with the scientific predictions before it started, was not going to be enough. It's just you delayed too long. Four weeks won't do it. But four weeks would always be given. It made an effect. It went down. Didn't go down far enough, so it's gone back up now. We're now up to the point where it's worse than it was at the start of the lockdown and his day still to go till Christmas, and that's when he wants to ease the restrictions, you know? And and that's why you shouldn't believe any crap about blaming this new variant. As I say, it may well be responsible for a heightened rate of transmission, of course, but the new increase exactly coincides with the end of the last lockdown. What caused it to shoot back up again was entering the new tier system. Tier two restrictions, load of bollocks. Tier 3 restrictions, not terrible, but not quite good enough for all the areas in Tier 3. That's why three quarters of Tier 2, 
saw increases and half of tier three the same thing. Now, tier four, I think will work, you know, provided that compliance is at a decent level. But, you know, that's a big if, isn't it? That is that is the question. Is compliance going to be at a decent enough level? The restrictions themselves, you know, are um, <clears throat> should well be good enough. They're basically another lockdown. So now, facing a complete meltdown of healthcare, particularly in London and the southeast and bits of east of England, Johnson has been forced to act. There are essentially two key differences. One, he's created a new tier four into which parts of the country, you know, predominantly the southeast and London, as well as bits of the east of England, like I said, will enter that imminently. That includes, and this is what surprises me, when they first started their regional restrictions, it was notable that they were largely dumping labour areas into it. You know, it was almost like they saw the opportunity to knacker the economies of those labour areas because they weren't giving them enough support either, financial support. We'll sink them. Then come the next election, we'll say, oh, look at all these labour councils. They done. They did really badly. Conservative run councils, they did all right, didn't they? It's not worked out that way. But what they were doing is they were dumping largely labour areas into the higher tiers and, and giving a light touch to conservative areas. This is the other way around. You know, the southeast, not so much London, but the southeast and, and bits of east of England, Tory heartlands, particularly the southeast. So you know it must be serious. Johnson knows he's going to face a serious backlash politically from this. Quite a lot of the MPs that are dead against any form of restrictions are from these areas. Uh, as well as, of course, the lunatic wing of the mainstream media will be on it as well. Um, this new tier four is essentially very similar to the lockdown we just had. And, and it applies to about a third of England's population. It's basically lockdown number three for them. And it goes over Christmas. Essentially, they are desperately trying to contain this new strain which exists largely in those areas. That's what the tier four is about. It's where this new strain has been identified. And they don't want people migrating from tier four to take it to other parts of the country. Now, we're not saying the strain doesn't exist in other parts of the country. They know it does. But the incidence is much, much lower. And the second difference, of course, the second main announcement was that he was going to scale back his Christmas plans. He's cancelling. He's doing what, in his words, is cancelling Christmas. Of course, it's not really cancelling Christmas. I don't remember any previous Christmas traditions to kill your granny. But there you go. Um, so it's no longer going to be. It was going to be basically three households can mix over a five day period. Now it's just going to be Christmas Day. Now, people will, of course, say they'll be pissed off because they'll say, well, we've spent a lot of money already. We've done all this preparation um, for these intended get togethers. Now, to that, I would say this. I mean, um, you know, I could say, first of all, you are right to be annoyed with the government for not making this announcement earlier because this isn't because of some sudden change, really. The only change is the scientists have said to, the, to Boris Johnson, hospitals are going to melt down now. That's it. it it's. It's not that he's only just found out about this variant. It's not that he's only just found out that the, the rate is already skyrocketing. It's not that he's only just found out that having this relaxation of the rules over Christmas is going to be a disaster. He knew all that before. But two things about the people who may complain, uh, particularly if they've put in a lot of time and money. The first thing is, if you intended to take advantage of this relaxation of the rules, you were doing so against all the medical and scientific advice. And I have to say this, I, I understand that people should be able to trust the government as their main source of information. If you at this point, after this amount of time, trust the government as your chief source of information and advice, you're not even trying to pay attention, are you? Let's be honest. You know, basically what you were trying to do on Christmas Day, whether you knew it or not, was risk the lives of yourself or the people you invited. Uh, so I'm not going to have a stunning amount of sympathy, other than, as I say, I do have sympathy uh, for people who, who put their trust in the government because they should be able to do that. But you should also know that this government, you can't. You, they, how many times have they failed you, really? And the second thing I would say is, I mean, you wanted to spend that time and money anyway. At least this way, you might be able to do the same next year, because for a lot of people, that wouldn't have been the case. In fact, for a lot of people, that's still not going to be the case because they're still going to have that get together on Christmas. It's not like the virus needs five days. One day will do. A couple of hours will do. A few minutes will do. Now, although I was very pleased by the announcement, there are going to be problems. And I don't mean some leftovers that will go to waste. 
there will be those both in the Conservative Party and the media that will attack these measures. Indeed, people from both groups were loudly hailing Johnson early this week for standing firm against the calls to rethink the rules. Because that's what happened. It's not just that Boris Johnson didn't make this decision earlier. He specifically ruled out even rethinking it. He wouldn't even rethink it. He could have just said, of course, I'll reconsider it. And then a day later, go, I've reconsidered it. No, it was still good for it. He wouldn't even reconsider. And that was just three days before the U-turn. And those same people will now openly attack Johnson and seek to undermine the message. Now, I was thinking of trying to wait till today from your point of view to bring this out, but it's going to be too close to the, to, to the thing. I just wanted to see the newspaper headlines just to see. But I think I can guess. I think I can guess. And it's not that important. But I'm going to guess that the Daily well, it'll be the, Sunday, the Mail on Sunday and, and the Telegraph will, uh, will be openly attacking this. I think um, the Times will frown at it. The Daily Express will talk about fish. You know, that's my predictions. But, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is those, those same people undermining that message will, as a result of, and, and, and in combination with, you know, historically low levels of trust in the government, I just worry that compliance is going to be really low. You know, it's like anything else. Compliance is usually much higher when everyone feels they're in it together. You know, you know the excuse when people break the rules, knowingly break the rules. Oh, well, everyone else does it. You know, that's the stock excuse, isn't it? So people feel if everyone else does it, then it's suddenly all right. The newspapers will, and, and MPs saying it, will give the impression that it's all right to break those rules. And it is not. And it would be lovely to think that people will pay heed to what's going on right now. Realise that Boris Johnson absolutely didn't want to do this. So for him to do it, it must be a really serious threat. And then make the decision to not even mix on Christmas Day. I just unfortunately don't see that happening. And again, look at look at the areas of the country where it most needs to happen. The South East, those Tory heartlands, the places that's now going to be in Tier 4. Low compliance there will have much more serious ramifications. Wales are going to scale things back as well because they were already talking about having to rethink some of this relaxation of the rules. It's quite bad in, in Wales. Um, they're also going to only relax the rules for Christmas Day now. So they've scaled well back from the original plans. Um, and they're also going to start their lockdown early. They'd already announced a lockdown. Again, I still think it's mad to announce a lockdown and not actually implement it for a long time. But it was going to be on the 28th. They're now basically doing it later today. Um, and just finally, I couldn't help a little wry smile at one of their statements on it, though. So from the Welsh government. While we all want to avoid further disruption to businesses and plans for Christmas, our overriding duty is to protect lives here in Wales. Correct. We know that 2021 will be a different and better year. Our economy will recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just as well that we've not got anything else on the horizon that's likely to hamstring the economy, isn't it? You know, like, I don't know, leaving a, a comprehensive customs union with our wealthiest and closest trading partners. Because that'd be a bit of a disaster. That'd be a really silly thing to do, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. But I'll leave you with those thoughts. Um, let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. Until next time, I'll see you later.